Okay, so uh, welcome to this uh, IS Distinguished Lecture uh, from uh, Professor Wu Ying. So uh, before we start, I think uh, many of us uh, know her already because uh, she, um, she know many of us have had collaboration with many of uh, people in, uh, in HKUST. But I still hope to uh, give a very brief introduction uh, for Professor Wu uh, before, before we start the uh, lecture. So uh, Professor Wu Ying, so she received her PhD in physics from HKUST in 2008. So, and, um, and in 2010, she joined the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia. So he's, she's a currently an associate professor of applied mathematics and computational science. So um, many of us know her. Um, she has a lot of uh, research interests. So um, she's in the, she's main interest is now in the areas of computational physics with focus on wave propagation in heterogeneous uh, media and uh, electromagnetic, acoustic, and elastic metamaterials, effective uh, medium theories, transport theory, time reversal imaging, and super resolution. So her interest also now extends to implementation of fast algorithm in solving large scale problem, classical wave uh, propagation problems. So uh, she's our old friend, and uh, we are looking forward to your know, great uh, talk on the three dimensional zero index materials. So uh, now I Stay to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jensen, for this uh, nice introduction. And uh, um, thank you for uh, spending time joining this uh, 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 talk, both at present and uh, remotely. Um, <clears throat> so, today I'm going to share with you um, our recent research progress in three dimensional zero index materials. And Okay, so first, let me uh, introduce my uh, novel collaborators, uh, Professor Huan Zhong Ma from uh, Hong Kong Baptist University and uh, Professor Yun Lai from uh, Nanjing University. Actually, all of us graduated from uh, HKST, which is a very great place. And uh, uh, the, uh, talk, uh, the work mentioned in this talk are mainly contributed by uh, Dr. Chang Qingxi, who is currently a uh, postdoc in our group. And here, I also want to acknowledge uh, the funding support from, uh, from COST, basically from our side. And uh, uh, also there are other funding aid, uh, agencies to support Professor Ma and the Professor Lai's group. Um, this is the outline of my talk. I'll start with the uh, uh, introduction about the history and the background and we're interest, why we're interested in doing this, uh, uh, study this kind of uh, very special materials. And uh, then followed by a, uh, a detailed uh, description of our recent progress on realizing three-dimensional zero index uh, materials. And I'll start with the uh, acoustic double zero index material and followed by the electromagnetic double zero index material in three dimensions. And finally, I'll give you a uh, summary. So here, this slide illustrates uh, some very basic phenomenon, which is called refraction, refraction of light. And you can see if you put a straw in a glass of water, and then if you uh, look from the side, the side view, you will see a broken straw. And if you see from the top, you will see a bended straw. And such phenomenon is caused by the refraction because the air, the glass, and the water, they have different refractive indices. And also a common, uh, this uh, phenomenon is uh, called mirage. So you can see actually, this is the highway, and I believe everybody has this uh, experience. If you are driving on the highway in the summer and in a very shining day, and the temperature is, uh, is high, and if you look in front, um, you will see like the, uh, the road is uh, covered with, uh, like covered with water. So there's no water actually, but it's uh, some kind of illusion that caused by the refraction. So you can see actually different refractive index will lead to this uh, interesting phenomenon. So 
tuning the refractive index or engineering the refractive index will give you some interesting properties. And now the question is, what is the refractive index at? Well, so for electromagnetic waves, the refractive index N is uh, the square root of the product of uh, dielectric constant epsilon and magnetic permeability mu. And for acoustic waves, it is uh, similar, but the uh, equation become um, under this uh, square root is uh, kappa, which is the uh, bulk modulus, divided by the mass density. So uh, let's take the electromagnetic wave as an example. And this picture shows the parameter space, where if both epsilon and mu are positive, which is the first quadrant, then the n become positive. And this is the normal dielectric material that the wave can probably uh, in this kind of material. And if it's on the second quadrant where epsilon is negative, but mu is positive, then their product is a negative number and you take square root, you'll get an imaginary number. So the wave vector becoming imaginary and that means the wave will uh, decay. So there's no probability. So that's why I use uh, red. And uh, this third quadrant, is uh, the famous negative refractive index material. So we all have uh, seen this uh, negative refraction because uh, the refractive index becoming negative. And now the question is, well, uh, we are interested in like this entire space. So what happens on the axis? So on the vertical axis, the dielectric constant will become zero. And this is a so-called absolute near zero material. And similarly, on the horizontal axis, um, the magnetic permeability mu equals to zero. And this is referred to as mu near zero material. So this is very special that one of the parameters turns to be zero and the product will be zero and the refractive index is zero. And since there's only one parameter becoming zero and we call them single zero index material. And I believe you have already um, paid attention or noticed there is an even more special point that is on the center. If it is on the center, then both parameters becoming zero. And in this case, n of course is zero again. So we call this double zero index material or double zero material, whatever double means two parameters. And uh, in this talk, I'll focus on this double zero index material. Okay, but before that, um, let me briefly mention why people are interested in such kind of very special materials. So for the single zero index material, and uh, a long time ago, uh, more than one decade, um, people find you have like this kind of very uh, narrow, ultra narrow waveguide. So intuitively, you think that uh, there's no way that the wave can propagate. It's like for this electromagnetic waves. But if this is uh, like uh, a single zero material, when epsilon goes to zero, and the energy can squeeze into this uh, very short narrow waveguide, and you can see here, this is the input and this is the output. You have almost unit transmission. Okay, so the energy can squeeze into this uh, narrow waveguide and then transport. So this is uh, for acoustic waves. And you can see here is also zero index material. And uh, so the wave can propagate from here through the uh, thin channel and then goes out. So this is uh, one advantage of uh, the single, single zero index material. And for double zero index material, so uh, again, long time ago, people find that uh, uh, if I fell, put some uh, zero, double zero index material into this uh, waveguide, and then put some kind of uh, defect into this, uh, into this uh, um, waveguide, and uh, it depends on this, uh, uh, the size and also the material of these uh, defects. And you can tune 
the transmission. Okay, sometimes the wave will be totally reflected, and sometimes the wave will be totally transmitted without disturbing its uh, wavefront. So this is uh, called like the cloaking effect. And also with zero index, double zero index material, you can uh, tune the uh, wavefront. So it's called wavefront sh uh, shaping. So these are some representing work in the uh, early times about zero index material. And now you may have a question. So is this zero index practical? Okay, how can I get this kind of zero index? Well, actually, the mother nature does not directly give us this uh, kind of uh, special material. And uh, uh, we have to think it from a so-called dynamic perspective that you consider this uh, uh, material is uh, frequency dependent. And uh, uh, according to some like this uh, constitutive laws, and if you change like uh, in a frequency band, your parameter is a function of the frequency. And this is uh, like the dynamic response. And um, we need to also understand it in the uh, concept or uh, in the perspective of uh, effective parameters. So it is effectively zero. If you look at each component, uh, they are not zero index, but uh, collectively they contribute to the, res uh, the response uh, is a zero uh, index response. So for those who are not quite familiar in this uh, field, let me just quickly uh, introduce what is the concept of effectivity. So I'd like to use this uh, as an analogy. If you look on the screen, that you can see there is a gray rectangle. This uh, rectangle is gray. But if I ask you, is this gray uniformly gray? Probably you cannot tell. But with a magnified view, this answer is quite clear that this gray uh, rectangle is not uniformly gray. It contains a lot of this uh, gray circles. But why can't us see this gray circles in the first place? Because they are too small to be resolved by our eyes. So we cannot see them very clearly, okay? We see this uh, uh, gray circles in a so-called average sense. But still, we can see some information. We see this, uh, uh, this rectangle is gray. It's not green, it's not red, because uh, the circles, they are gray. Okay, so to summarize, our eyes cannot see this fine little structures in such a medium, but we can see them in an average sense and uh, the response actually carries the information carried by these uh, fine little uh, structures. So the same thing happens in wave propagation. If you have a very complex uh, structure and if your wavelength is large, and then the wavelengths will not be able to resolve these fine little structures and it will pass through the material as if it is passing through a homogenized or a uniform material. So, Actually, if you like think more deeper, that every uh, material in our life, they are made of atoms. To a certain extent, they are not continuous. Okay, like water. The water you look at like continuous water, but uh, if you go into the atomic uh, scale and you see these water molecules. Okay, but we have this uh, uh, material parameters. We treat this water as. Uh, like homogeneous material, because like in the, uh, the, the, the light has a wavelength that is much larger compared to the atomic scale. So the same thing happened here when we are considering like um, a wave whose wavelength is larger compared to these uh, microstructures. And the waves see it as if this is a homogeneous material. And uh, this homogeneous material is expressed or characterized by some material parameters. Here is the epsilon and the mu for electromagnetic waves. And for the acoustic waves will be the kappa and the rho. So the zero index here is essentially the effective 
zero. Okay. Um, by making this point clear, let's see what happened in the literature that for different systems, we have uh, uh, people actually have realized this uh, zero index material for acoustic, thermal, and optical systems. Okay, so in the next slide, I will introduce like the method. But here you can see um, they are all like uh, two dimensional structures. Okay, so before people are focused on this uh, two dimensional zero index material and it, um, almost all of the practical realization was in two dimensions. So then you may want to ask, okay, how can I achieve this zero index? Well, um, as I said, like here we have uh, uh, this uh, in the literature, there are mainly like this, this way is uh, uh, proposed by uh, Professor Nada and Geta, and he is a pioneer in this uh, uh, whole field. And this is called the doping, photonic doping. That means actually you can see this, uh, it's just like borrow the idea from the semiconductors that you have uh, this uh, uh, material, which is uh, one parameter, like approaching zero, and you put some doper. And uh, then you can make well maintain this uh, uh, one parameter uh, approximately zero, and the other is uh, can be changed by the dopers. Okay. And another way, as I uh, introduced, like uh, considering from uh, the traditional effective medium, so we know in a low frequency, the scattering of uh, uh, and scatter is dominated by the monopole and the dipole resonances. Here, this is a monopole resonance, and these are the dipole resonance in a for a uh, uh, cylindrical scatter. And the monopole resonance determines the effective epsilon, while the dipole resonances determine the effective mu. Well, this is a for the um, the, 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 the transverse uh, magnetic uh, wave where the electric field is always pointing to the z direction and uh, this is considered as a stator. So uh, if we can tune this uh, uh, the size or the material of the scatter and make the resonances of the monopole and the dipole happens together and then we'll be able to get the so-called double zero index material where you can see the effective epsilon and the effective mu across zero simultaneously. So this was um, firstly achieved by Professor C.T. Chan's book. And um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, later work follows this uh, recipe um, to achieve this uh, uh, double zero index material, okay? Well, so here comes our motivation. So for us, we focus on, we ask ourselves. So since all the previous work, like the practical realizations, they are all focused on two dimensions. And how about 3D? Okay. Um, would it be, can we like generalize what we have achieved in 2D directly into 3D? And what are the advantages? So if we can have three dimensional, double zero index material, then we can actually have some kind of platform that offer you the uh, three-dimensional control of wave propagation. And uh, in terms of uh, like some practical applications like uh, this uh, in the antenna or in this uh, um, like uh, controlling wave propagation, and also we may be able to find some kind of new physical properties from that because uh, with increased dimensionality, you will see something that is different from the lower dimensional counterparts. Well, this is not a trivial task, actually, because uh, we tried. And uh, uh, in three dimension, so for example, for electromagnetic waves, there's no multiple states. That means you have to uh, consider of uh, like uh, the dielectric constant and the magnetic permeability are both associated with uh, the dipole states. One is uh, the di uh, electric dipole and the other is a magnetic dipole. And now you have to uh, tune like the resonance 
of these two dipole states. And uh, then uh, from the perspective, like the, 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 the uh, similar way that uh, we did in 2D, then you have to turn them and make them uh, like uh, degenerate. That is not trivial, actually. And another thing is like for, uh, we know that for two dimensional cases, the acoustic and electromagnetic waves, they are mathematically equivalent. So that means, even though they are not directly, you know, uh, the material pro uh, properties are different, but mathematically, the two dimensional acoustic wave equation and two dimensional uh, EM wave equation, they have uh, mathematical correspondence. That means what you have achieved in EM may be applied to the acoustic. But in 3D, uh, there's no such equivalence. The three dimensional EM wave and the three dimensional acoustic wave, they are are uh, different. And uh, still, uh, the three dimensional acoustic wave is a uh, uh, scalar wave, while the three dimensional electromagnetic wave is uh, like the vector wave. So um, there will be some more possibilities to study these uh, three dimensional signal next material. So here comes our first work of three dimensional acoustic double zero index material. And uh, the details you can refer to this paper published uh, almost two years ago, exactly actually two years ago. Um, so we actually wondered quite a while and uh, we tried many methods and trying to find out uh, the how to design a practical zero index material. So we start with uh, the acoustic version. But acoustic, uh, as I said, it has some internal challenges. So we know that uh, uh, the, by the way, our design principle is still following the previous, you know, this uh, effective, uh, uh, effective medium that we want to find out some kind of attuned the resonances of a monopole and a dipole. And here, um, for acoustic waves, we know that uh, the air, the speed in air is low. Usually if you have a material, like solid material, that the uh, speed uh, propagating in that material is higher than the air, okay? So the higher speed means that actually the, uh, uh, the, 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 the refractive index is low. And if you look at the field, it will be more concentrated in the uh, air component. So you want to, we want to uh, find some kind of uh, zero index material for airborne sound. That is very difficult. Okay, because the wave propagate in air is a slow, slower one compared to in the medium. Well, so, but then actually still think, um, rather than focus on like we concentrate some kind of field into the scattering object, we design this kind of uh, structure which satisfy this uh, so-called glide symmetry. And you can see we have this uh, steel rods and uh, uh, just like staggered, you have uh, like this rod and then um, uh, the other is uh, like this direction and the other is uh, like this direction. So they satisfy this uh, glide symmetry. And uh, from a different view or choice of the unit cell, you can see this is actually, uh, the right one is the equivalent to the left one, but just so you cut uh, different unit cell. And it's very symmetric. You have some kind of uh, like uh, a room in the center, and then there is uh, some air coming out. And uh, this is a kind of, uh, make some kind of uh, uh, like cage, this uh, structures. So this structure really looks simple. Okay, but when we calculate its band structures, and we found that there is a single branch here and a threefold uh, degenerate branch. And this single branch, if we look at the field uh, distribution at the gamma point, this corresponds to a monopole mode. And the other three here, they are degenerated dipole modes because we have three directions. So we have three degenerated dipole modes. 
And for this uh, particular uh, geometry, that's uh, we have the bars of these uh, solid bars. Uh, uh, so this A is the lattice constant and L is the side length. So if we tune this geometry, and by the way, the solid bar is treated as some hard objects. So the, you can see the field is uh, uh, or in the air. And if we tune the geometry, basically tune the uh, size of the bar, and then we found there is one point that these four modes would meet. And once they meet, they form a linear dispersion and intersected with uh, two flat bands. Well, in the, the flat means that in the vicinity of the ground center. And uh, we can calculate the uh, effective parameters from a field average method. And we found like this uh, two uh, dash lines are for the case where we have uh, this size, the geometry and the uh, solid lines are for corresponding to this case, which is uh, this uh, geometry. So you can, with, let's focus on the solid lines. So at this frequency point, both uh, effective, well, beta is the inverse of kappa, okay? So both beta and this rho, those are cross zero, okay? So this is actually, a zero index material, okay? So then from this zero index material, we demonstrate a acoustic periscope. So uh, we have like this corner structures with guide and this red uh, part indicate the double zero index medium and the blue indicated the air and this uh, boundary uh, of the waveguide are set as uh, hard walls. So the incident wave is coming from the top and then go through this uh, corner and then going out. Let's see this, uh, this two, uh, these are the new, uh, numerical simulations. The bottom one here means I just put a uh, effective in the simulation domain, I put this uh, like effective double zero index. I just put a uniform, I assume this is a uniform material with uh, uh, double zero index. So you can see the wavefront is beautifully like uh, recovers its original plan wavefront at the output. And this is, uh, we replace this part, this red part by using the, uh, designed for a uh, phononic crystal. That is uh, those uh, uh, well, with these uh, uh, bars. And uh, still we can observe that the outgoing uh, waves preserves its original wavefront. We can still see the out wave is uh, like has this uh, prime wavefront. And this one, there's no feeling. So it's just this uh, uh, waveguide with corners. You know, of course, this incident wave coming from here, and you see strong reflections, and this uh, outgoing wave can you cannot tell the original wave from anymore. Okay, so this uh, is the uh, numerical simulation that demonstrates the acoustic periscope. Okay, and uh, <coughs> Professor Ma did the experiments. And this is a picture of the sample. Now you can see there is a web guide, and uh, these are the alumni rods. And this is inside, uh, remove the cover of the web guide, and you can see these are the samples. And uh, they have this uh, uh, setup uh, almost the same as uh, the one that's uh, in a uh, numerical simulation. So this is a loudspeaker, this is the impinging incident wave, and these are the uh, detectors. And then let's look at the experimental results that the vertical axis indicate different frequencies. And these are the, uh, this, uh, these are the free transform of this field. And you can see that exactly at this, uh, uh, we call it like the Dirac means uh, you have the linear dispersion. 
So at this point, we have a very uh, sharp dot here. And away from this frequency, and uh, this is no longer a dot, but rather a, uh, a spreaded region, a circle. Okay. And uh, this is along different directions. And you can see at the center frequency, we have this uh, along the KX direction, there is a uh, uh, certain displacement. That means so the wave is propagating along the X direction. Indeed, the, uh, if you remember the previous uh, setup here, so the outgoing wave is coming from the X direction. So uh, here, this uh, small displacement indicate that so the uh, there is a finite k along that direction. And uh, this is the uh, pressure field distributions measured on the output plane. So you can see this uh, pine wave front. So this uh, um, experimental results uh, actually confirms uh, the uh, our numerical simulation and also confirms that so this is uh, essentially a double zero index material. And uh, also we studied, what if I put a defect into the, uh, the double zero index material? So later I will go back to this point again. So if I put a defect here and uh, with the zero index material, we can still have uh, some, you know, this uh, kind of uh, uh, transmission that preserves its original wavefront. But uh, if without the uh, uh, zero index material, then you will see this uh, wavefront is uh, completely uh, distorted. So I'll come back to this uh, point again later uh, to compare this case with the electromagnetic case. So for the acoustic, uh, three-dimensional in zero index material, we report, uh, we report the first practical design or practical realization of a three-dimensional zero index material. And we fabricated this uh, uh, acoustic periscope with the design of this uh, uh, zero index material. And uh, we demonstrate this uh, wave channeling effect that goes beyond this uh, two-dimensional system. And now the question is, we have already got the zero index material for acoustic waves. Then how about electromagnetic wave? Can we just directly extend this design into the EM wave? Well, the answer is yes and no. Yes means in principle, actually we can start think of the symmetry, considering the symmetry. And there might be possible that we use the same symmetry and to extend into the electromagnetic counterpart. And no means, because I, as I said before, the three-dimensional EM wave equation and the acoustic wave equation, they are not mathematically equivalent. And the EM wave, we know that uh, the electromagnetic wave propagates the speed of light is the highest in air or vacuum. And if you have some like dielectric material, and the speed is lower, okay? So in a certain sense, this is called the so-called like inverse structure for the acoustic version. And well, so then let's talk about this uh, three-dimensional electromagnetic double zero index material. And the details you can find in this uh, paper that uh, was published a few months ago. Um, so actually, now you can see, uh, this is the uh, design of uh, our uh, zero index material. Actually, uh, Dr. Xu spent enormous lot of time in finding this structure and uh, tuning the parameters in order to get uh, good results. So in terms of the symmetry, you can see it's more or less similar to the one that we uh, introduced earlier, okay? Um, we have some kind of this uh, cross in the center. So before for the acoustic, we have some kind of this uh, cross in the center, but this cross is air. And here we have uh, these uh, aluminum rods and working in the gigahertz frequency, okay? So with a uh, particular parameter, 
we compute its band structure. And we found, in particular, these two points, okay, two uh, points A and B. If you look carefully, both of them involve three degenerate states. Okay. And if you look at uh, look at their uh, electric field, then you'll realize one is the electric dipole and the other is the magnetic dipole. And you can see this structure, actually it is equivalent along X, Y, and Z directions. Okay, so therefore their bipolar resonances, they are degenerate at the gamma point. Okay. And each point corresponding to threefold de degeneracy. And now we want to see if it is possible that to make this six states coming together. So then uh, Chongqing did hard work and eventually achieved this uh, structure that they indeed will find like six states meeting together. And uh, here it's interesting that uh, actually it is uh, we call double Dirac cone. What does that mean? We have two sets of linear cross, okay, and intersecting with two flat bands. Remember previously when we talk about occlusive waves, it was one cone intersecting with two flat bands. So the flat bands for both electromagnetic wave and acoustic waves are two. But the linear distortion for acoustic wave it is just one linear distortion, one pair. And here you see that actually this direction you can see there are two lines and here also two lines. Okay, so this is a different from the uh, acoustic wave. But anyway, we compute the effective uh, parameters effective epsilon and effective mu. Again, across this frequency, both of them turns to be zero. So this is again, a double, double zero index material. And uh, uh, here, uh, this time I'm going to introduce our uh, experimental setup first. So Professor, uh, Professor Lai's group fabricated this uh, uh, sample. And uh, this is, uh, like you can see, this uh, is the uh, picture for the experiments. That's uh, this, in the center, this is the line crystal that the unit cell is here. So now, in the next, I'll demonstrate the uh, uh, like properties. So with this three-dimensional zero-index electromagnetic material, you can do I have an object inside, but the wave can go through as if the object is cooked. And by changing the boundary conditions, and you can like uh, control its uh, propagation behavior. And here is a total reflection. And of course, you can also do redirections, like incident wave from the x direction, and outgoing wave from this minus y direction, and also from convert from the uh, X direction incidence into the uh, Z direction output. So this is uh, the results, both simulation and experiments. So please note that here we have a cubicle uh, of the fabricated sample. And uh, we put this, uh, the red, uh, yellow means the PEC boundary condition and uh, blue means the TMC boundary condition. So this demonstrates if I have an incident wave here and I block the other sides, and this is an outgoing wave, that the um, simulated and experimental results, they uh, agree with each other very well. And this is another demonstration that this uh, top side is uh, unblocked, but this side is blocked. So with this zero index material, you can see the outgoing wave almost again preserves its original wavefront, and almost the amplitude is uh, uh, is uh, uh, 
uh, preserves its original amplitude. But without this material, if I remove this material, and both the simulation and experiments results measures almost nothing here outside uh, in the output. Okay. Um, another example is uh, we call it switch. That means, well, I have this uh, uh, zero index material and then covered with uh, uh, its boundaries. And if I have the proper boundary, I can have the wave completely transmitted. And if I change the boundary, then uh, there's no uh, transmitted wave. So you just by changing the boundary from the PZ into PMC, and people may ask, how can I do this, uh, this change? Actually, Professor Lee is a uh, expert on this. And what we did is uh, we moved like uh, one fourth of the whole map to equivalently um, make such change. Um, so this is uh, another experimental uh, experiments and uh, both simulation and experiments results showing this uh, phenomenon. And to summarize, so we again report the first practical realization of three dimensional electromagnetic double zero index material. And we fabricate this uh, uh, double zero index material and uh, uh, to demonstrate the uh, wave re redirection uh, functionality and switching functionalities. Actually, there are other uh, interesting functionalities out there, but uh, uh, we did not uh, uh, show here. And now, uh, in the last part, I would like to uh, mention is uh, one of the key difference um, of this uh, uh, two-dimensional system, acoustic system, and EM system. Okay, actually, in my previous uh, talk, I have already uh, mentioned some. That is, they are uh, fundamentally they have uh, different mathematical equations. Okay, and um, if you talk about like these uh, physical differences, that the uh, acoustic wave is a scalar wave and uh, EM wave is a vector wave. And in three dimensions, and you already see the band structure, that acoustic wave has one monopole and a three dipole, and we tune them to be degenerate. And EM wave, rather we have uh, three electric dipole and three magnetic dipole, six states, we want to make them uh, degenerate. And here, uh, we talk about like clocking with uh, this uh, double zero index material in 3D. Basically, we limit ourselves into the case where we put this uh, uh, double zero index material in a waveguide. So for example, in this uh, paper that was published in 2010, uh, you can see this is a waveguide and this filled with the uh, double zero index material. And inside the double zero index material, there are some scattered uh, effects. This is a 2D system, okay? So it's a two dimensional electromagnetic wave. And uh, people studied what kind of a condition that I can have total transmission, okay? And sometimes have uh, zero transmission. So actually they summarize the transmission is described by this function. And by the way, this should be uh, a so-called like a closed loop integral and uh, omega depends, uh, omega, omega is the defect. Okay, actually I should write partial. So it's uh, integration along the boundary. So you can see here, the size or the material of the, prom, uh, of the defect will affect the transmission. And for uh, 2D acoustics, because uh, they are mathematically equivalent, so I do not list example here. And for three-dimensional acoustic waves, again, this like the waveguide and filled with uh, double zero index material and inside are defects. And the transmission can be written in this form, rather than the L here is a DS, S means surface. 
And you can see this um, defect, its uh, uh, shape also affects the transmission. Okay, so you can sometimes it's uh, it's uh, stronger and sometimes it's weaker. Okay. But for electromagnetic waves, this story is different. And the transmission is determined by this expression. And please note, now this like the uh, uh, closed loop integral is on the intersection of the domain. Okay, this like uh, some kind of uh, I choose a uh, a loop and the defects. So what does that mean? So let's take this uh, this one as example. So for this material, okay. So for this case, if I can find two closed loop. Here I use A1 and A2. A1 is the yellow one, and A2 is the uh, uh, black one. If I can find this two close like surface, whatever shape, but uh, A1 has to like go in the this uh, horizontal like uh, include like this uh, the boundary surfaces. Okay, it has to be uh, extended to the boundary. Okay, so if I can find to like close the surface and without intersecting with any of these uh, uh, defect then that means you can look at here that means this intersection is zero okay so if this uh, surface does not intersect with uh, with the defects that means this is zero and that means my transmission will always be one. Okay, so you can see here, whatever kind of a strange defect I put inside, like a cos, and here there is an NJU, okay? And some defects even touching one surface and even go beyond the surface. As long as I can find those two A1 and A2, these two surface, that can go surround this zero index material, but without touching the defect, then this transmission will always be one. Okay, so it's kind of a, we can think of some kind of a population effect, and um, this is uh, uh, special to this uh, three dimensional EM case, or in other words, or if I express it in a more mathematical way, that means if you have like A1 and A2 are simply connected, there is no hole. Hole means that the defect intersect with the, with the surface. If there's no hole, then this integration will give you just a zero and uh, it will not affect the transmission. But this thing never happens in 2D and acoustic counterparts. Why? Because you can imagine 2D is kind of three dimensional projections. Okay, so you choose like, like a uh, integration path here, as long as there is no defect, there must be, the defect must be intersecting with this, uh, with this uh, like uh, integration surface. Okay, and for the acoustic wave, because this is a volume integral, okay, so, uh, sorry, the surface integral. Okay, so this is a, a difference. Actually, the fundamental difference is uh, the acoustic wave is a scalar wave, okay? And the EM wave is uh, like some kind of, vec like this vector wave, you can think that it can go bypass this uh, defense. So uh, this is uh, like, the uh, fundamental difference between this uh, electromagnetic wave and uh, acoustic waves. All right. So at the end, I'd like to summarize that we have uh, achieved these uh, practical realizations of both 
electromagnetic and acoustic double zero index materials. They share certain similarities. For example, they can like do the wave from shaping and they can do the redirection of the uh, wave, but they are distinct, they're different, like in terms of uh, doing the cloaking. Okay. And compared to their two dimensional counterparts, in a three dimensional cases, offers like more possibilities in controlling wave propagation. All right. Thank you. And uh, I wish uh, this can be, give you some <laughs> inspirations. And uh, any questions, please. Thank you, Professor Wu. Uh, so now is a uh, question time. Uh, we have two kind of audience, so uh, online and also physical. So for online people, I think you can type on the open question box or you can unmute, is it? We, they can unmute, right? Uh, or for some of the physical audience, yeah. And maybe I ask the first one. Okay, I asked the first one. So uh, yeah, you, you show that in your band structure is around the omega a over two pi c is around zero point five or or above, right? So, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, sure. you get an effective medium, and also you 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 talk about the tunneling through this uh zero index. Mm -hmm. uh, will this omega a over two pi c the value of it will affect this tunneling or, or not? So I noticed that may not be a uh, um, very Right, the effective medium approximation probably uh, has to be small, right? That number, omega over two by C, but you don't need that. So will that affect the tunneling, right? So any any difference with, with that, uh, if I have a different ratio of this omega over two by C? Uh, so if I understand correctly, that's what you're saying, if I change to another frequency, would this tunneling effect be affected? Uh, so, so usually I see that in the simulation you use a, when you first verify that you use an effective medium, so yes. a zero index, and then you see a tunnel, right? Yes. Um, then at that time, you probably assume omega a for 2 pi c may be quite a small number because it has an effective, very vigorous effective uh, medium. Actually, but I don't think you are, uh, that's so important in your case. So any, any, any insight on that because... Um, actually, are you talking about this case? Yeah, for example, this case, I see that probably on the upper right is like 0.5, right? You see? The omega a for two pi c. Yeah, so this one is uh, like at that frequency. Okay, so yeah. it doesn't need the effective medium between. Is it that's what what you mean? Uh, well, so this this is actually uh, some people have different idea like uh, perspectives for this case. That um, well, we have a different uh, wavelength in this case. Omega a over two pi c is a wavelength in the background or in the host material. But actually in the effective, it's the wavelength is pretty long because it's a zero index. Therefore, uh, actually um, this goes to another, another question of uh, uh, when the effective medium is valid. Um, we consider in this case, a more relaxed condition that as long as the effective wavelength in the effective medium is long, and we consider this as uh, like valid. And for this particular case, of course, during this simulation, we don't assume any frequency, it's just to put you know, negative, uh, zero number in the simulation. But for this case, it's, you need to consider the uh, frequency. The frequency has to be at that, uh, at that point. Mm -hmm. Because if you are away from the point, then the effective parameters goes into some different story. So then it's not a zero. Maybe near zero is I see, fine. I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I see that Professor Zhang has a question. Okay. <laughs> uh, for this acoustic uh, periscope, uh, can you use a, a single index material to achieve the, the same phenomenon? Single zero. Yeah, single zero. Single zero. The uh, the 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 issue is, uh, uh, you may have a very strong impedance in the smash, yeah. and uh, when you intermittently come in, it may not be able to couple into the system. It total the majority will get reflected. I see. Yeah. But if, if some get 
through, then you can still see from the other side, isn't it? Uh, I guess if certain like this is a similar, maybe similar to the squeezing that you have a very thin channel that maybe turn channel mm -hmm. to the other side. Yeah. Okay. Another. It's not a question. It's actually a, a comment. You you have a, a chip, a very interesting uh, for the case of three D mm -hmm. um, acoustic or or in wave. Okay. Uh, accidental degeneracy, you get uh, uh, four with four state degenerate, one point and six state yes. point dependent. If you cut the sample into finite size, mm -hmm. okay, and all these six modes can radiate, uh, radiate it with a different radiation uh, modes, and then you have you may be able to achieve a a certain, a certain point immediately in a high dimension, a certain point. Maybe it's called EP6 or EP4, or EM wave or a cruise wave. This uh, could be could be tried, I think. That's uh, just some suggestions. Yeah, that's uh, very, 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 very important. Because uh, mm -hmm. just a little bit differential loss, you, you are able mm -hmm. to, you, you are already at uh permission degeneracy high dimension high degree of permission degeneracy any introduction of differential loads you will be able to achieve high order at some point phenomenon mm -hmm. yeah. okay i i see there's a question now on the chat box yeah, I have to ask, is there a typical value of uh, transmission coefficient of 3D acoustic, this uh, double index material? Transmission coefficient? Transmission coefficient, yeah. Uh, typical from Chen thing. Uh, so I guess this que question is, um, um, if I don't, if I don't do if I'm not very carefully designed, will, 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 what kind of value you will obtain, uh, I guess. Or... Uh, if, if like this the question is referring to this kind of uh, transmission value, then this, you can calculate that. Otherwise, if, uh, if it's about like the periscope, then Ideally, the transmission should be like almost unity. Yeah, if we don't consider this uh, this loss and uh, if the impedance is uh, measured pretty well. Yeah. So in the first type of periscope, the only design criteria is uh, zero index. For the yeah. second type of experiment, it, it, it has to be relying on these two equations, right? yeah. two formulas. Like this, this, this periscope that only depends on, you know, this, uh, uh, impedance, and uh, if we don't consider the loss, then it's just a depend on the impedance. And for the second type, that depends on what kind of uh, what kind of inclusions inside. Um, maybe we click out the check box. Uh, uh, yeah, there's another question. To what extent okay. can you control the impedance? <laughs> this is a very, very, very good question, actually. So. Um, so actually, we followed this uh, Professor Chen's pioneering work about this uh, using direct point to have this uh, zero uh, index. Then the impedance is uh, like the uh, ratio of the slope. So um, that characteristic impedance, it's not easy to tune. But sometimes we found that you can manipulate the surface, cut like the surface, and to slightly adjust the surface impedance. Okay, so this is uh, uh, some kind of uh, like uh, small trick, but uh, but you cannot, of course, you cannot like tune over a very broad range. Oh. Yeah. So when you say that when you cut the interface, I I I understand from your band structure is that that you will still get double zero. Yes. Whatever how you cut the interface. Uh, 
but at the same time, you say that the impedance uh, can change. Wow. Well, so this is uh, like you can understand it in this way that the band structure calculation is uh, for like the bulk mm -hmm. or the uh, infinite large these uh, properties. But uh, you know the transmission like we have uh, two types of uh, uh, impedance. One is uh, the characteristic impedance, which is a mu over epsilon fixed by root. And the other is when you manipulate like the surface that you get it more coupled to the wave. Okay, so this is uh, like we engineer some kind of surface impedance and to get the wave more into the system. But this adjustment is, uh, is very small. So it sounds like zero over zero <laughs> is an arbitrary number. So you can, so it is still depends on somehow you, how you cut uh, the characteristic oh. impedance is determined by when you have zero over zero, you have the uh, the epsilon over the only like the slope, okay. the ratio of the slope, yes. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, CT has a question. Yeah. It's uh, it's that question. Um. What what what? Is oh yeah, yeah. He's also already asked. You you have already answered. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, provide them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have a conceptual question. Um, what what are the phase velocity and also you know, the group velocity? You know, inside, you know, say your uh, couple <coughs> uh, zero of the uh, index of reflection uh, medium. The phase velocity. Phase and group. Okay, so phase velocity is uh, actually infinity because uh, this is uh, c uh, over n. When n goes to zero, then phase is uh, uh, is zero, and the group velocity we can look at the uh, well. A simple answer is so we look at the band structure and we check what is the uh, uh, the slope that the uh, the omega over decay. Yeah, but uh, well, so if you um, we 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 did did some uh, two dimensional the experiments, uh, not experiments, the numerical experiments. So for kind of a pulse propagating in the in the material, that's actually uh, when it get into, you can see like this uh, this field will be excited like almost like in the system um, well, very quickly, but uh, like the propagation of the pulse, uh, it still has uh, like this. Uh, you can see the wave packet is uh, propagating at some kind of, uh, you know, this uh, finite speed. Yeah. So the phase velocity, the short answer is phase velocity is, a, is, uh, is infinity and the group velocity depends on this the omega over decay. Thank you. Thank you. So I see that's a, yeah, that's an online question. Reservation when there remain some objects with different shapes inside me, except the full distribution. Uh, I mean, so the zero index will result in the reservation of the wave front of the EM wave. Have you measured the transmit? Trans transmissivity when there remain some objects with different shapes inside the medium, uh, except the field distribution. So the trans uh, actually, if I understand it correctly, that is, if there is some object means defect, some kind of different shapes inside this zero index material. Uh, what is the transmission? The picture may show that not all plan waves get through. Maybe the mesh issue. So if I get this question that is uh, talking about the last case, right? If, if this he's is talking about the experiment, uh, maybe he see that the plan rate is not the transmission efficiency is not one, is it? Yes. But inside here, we don't have any defect objects. 
Yeah. So I, th I think probably it's referring to this, if, if I'm correct. Now, ideally, actually, you can see here because uh, this the this is a, 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 a match impedance case that uh, that's inside here, the regardless of uh, what kind of shape, as long as it does not connect to opposite surface, then you can have this uh, uh, total transmissions and. Uh, not all pan will get through. This this point I'm not quite understand. If like uh, for a uh, like this uh, thing, the uh, some ideal case, which the material is not like I just put zero there, then this uh, wave can go through it. But for the practical case, as I said, as uh, uh, Jensen has already asked, for the practical case, because the effective median is frequency dependent. Okay, so away from that frequency, then like other component of the wave, it will not be able to like uh, totally like it's uh, not ideally the zero index. So therefore, it's uh, still for certain in the practical like a uh, truly true uh, real medium, then it's uh, still like uh, not very broadband. It's, uh, uh, short, like single frequency. Yeah, so the band path is, uh, uh, that's, that's really depends on like, what kind of region you can consider it as zero. Yeah. On this slide, very interesting, you mentioned a rule that uh, try to predict whether this is a, a total transmittance or not, right? So you said it's a vertical and a horizontal plane. Yeah. So in the so I'm still trying to understand in the in the in the in the right hand side that one, I can't find a vertical plane that doesn't pass through the defect, right? So I I, uh, actually, I may this, not uh, may not be. Yeah, this, still, this, still trying this to you can you can imagine. Let me see. Okay, this is a wave guide. Okay, let's assume even though this is a circular shape, so you have a defect, but it's not the point. Is your defect cannot connect to the front and the back surface. So this one, the yellow. You can see actually it is not touch. Oh, it's not punching through, right? It's not punching yeah. through. Right? Oh, okay. I see. It's going through the front surface, but not touch the back. Oh, I see. So I if see. you have something that is connected the front and the back, or connecting the top and the bottom, then this is a problematic. I see. I see. Are you assuming as long as uh, the median couple uh, uh, can have open can have an open part? Yes. So, in other words, if you like, you have this uh, whatever shape, this this uh, this uh, like a one a two this two surface, whatever shape it is, you can always project it to like uh, either uh, the horizontal plane. Let's say, for example, this uh, this a two here. A two is horizontal. Okay, you can always project to the horizontal plane. And then this uh, defect, okay, uh, like this defect should not, like in this uh, horizontal plane, intersecting with that, with that uh, like a one. So uh, so yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. That, that works, right? Yes. Yeah, because uh, according to that path, the phase of relation is zero. Uh -huh. Right. That, 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 that's the point. Then. But if the punch through, then okay. if this cylinder punch punch through it, I think uh, again means uh, it won't get uh, unit transmission. If that uh, square yeah, thing yeah, yeah, punch yeah. through, yeah. Then so I, if you I have, have a, like go through. Yeah. if you have like some uh, uh, intersections, like the object, the the, the 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 defect. For example, one simple case is a defect connecting the front and back surface. And now there is no way that whatever how you bend the surface, how you, you cannot find a horizontal loop that does not intersect with this with this uh, defect, and then the transmission will be different. But as far as you can, like thinking or whatever, like this way that you can go around this uh, uh, this defect, then the the transmission is always very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I have a comment actually that I 
I think your experiment is very difficult to do because it's 3D and yeah. um, I think most people will think about it's uh, like uh, doing 2D is easy, but 3D <laughs> is I think is super difficult and 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 I thinking uh, make it like both acoustic and E and 3D. <laughs> so it's uh, I think it's very difficult. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So come back to the previous questions about effectiveness. Effectiveness is determined in a fork, right? Uh -huh. So when you have an interface. Okay, when you approach the interface, the effect median parameter may change, right? Something? Yes. So it's not an index, but when you have an interface, then the impedance is determined by the local parameter at near the boundaries, right? So that effect, that parameter may not be zero because of uh, you have a zero index in the box. But when you approach the, the boundary, the boundary parameter may not be zero anymore. So in any case, you 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 may have a impedance, uh, you may have a reflection, isn't it? Uh, well, what I can say is, uh, uh, it's actually for uh, for our case. Uh, to be honest, we didn't study this uh, like the interface effect, and. Well, I think probably it's uh, because uh, we are lucky that uh, the wave is uh, more like uh, coupled into into the system. But actually, I think uh, what you are talking like when the uh, on the boundary like this, uh, uh, the effect median is like different from the bulk. Is um, uh, for my experience may happen more when you have uh, this uh, high order mode. When you have a monopole and dipole mode, like this uh, this boundary, like this uh, effect is not that, uh, not that uh, big. And uh, yeah, so, uh, and here we, the, when we calculate the effective medium, actually uh, it's from like, Using the uh, surface integrals, yeah. So, uh, I I I guess it's the our case is not that uh, sensitive to this uh, the surface boundary effect. Thank you. Any any more questions? Uh, from the audience. Um, Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, just a minute, I, I came to the mic. Uh, thank you for that nice talk. I would like to ask the question about the transmission here. Uh, first is like, if I understand correctly, if I just put two walls of the cube here, I can also get a transmit I can also get the transmitted, transmit transmissivity as unity. Is that right? Uh, because I can, two, I can just two walls like that. Two walls. Two thin walls, just two surface, uh, but with thickness. But do you connect the top and bottom? Um. The opposite, so my boundary. You mean uh in your in your figure A you you just have. A1 and A2, two surface. Yeah, so this A1 and A2 is like an illustration that I select to demonstrate that there's a possibility that I can select as this. So the A1, A2 is arbitrary. Yes, but so, uh, you have to like, for example, this uh, A1, it goes through the top surface and the bottom surface. So if my if my material is only of the A1 and A2 shape. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you connect the top and the boundary, so the connection is so very important. If you connect it is, the it is boundary, connected. Then you, 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 you have to calculate the integral here. This DL will not be zero. So for us, if there is no, like this, this means A2 is a surface, and only the I means the I's object. So if you like uh, doing like this uh, intersection is not zero, 
And then you would have finite DM, uh, this non zero DM, then you do the integration. I mean, I mean, uh, for example, in your left, right, in your figure on the right hand side, the figure B, the yellow one, mm -hmm. if I if I add one more, if I add one more obstacle in, in the in the y direction, it's like a corner shape. Oh, okay. So you mean if you have an L shape, yeah, like one touching the front surface, one touching the yes, yes. top surface. Yes. Oh, uh, this this won't matter because uh, you can, for example, if your L shape is like uh, coming coming out here and then here, right? Yeah. And you can select A1, for example, at uh, almost the bottom, so, that so away from the L, and you can select A2, like here, and also avoid this L. So if I extended this L shape, I can, I can get uh, only, only a shape is like this. Uh -huh. And yeah, the you can, two, you can. two walls, it's like two walls, the, the left-hand side wall and the down, downward, uh -huh. the forward one. So oh. the, the, the bottom line is you can do whatever shape as long as the shape does not connect the opposite surface. Okay, okay. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, another question is like, here you talk about the absolute value of the transmission. I, I wonder if I put the material in, in the way the, the wave propagates. So the phase change is zero right yeah because uh, so because so in terms of cloaking here you're talking about the wavefront will not change because i always can uh, find a way to detect the face if there is nothing in between the starting point and the end point there should be a face face change but you insert a, a double zero material in between you can find the phase is changing so here in terms of cloaking you uh i think i think i can still find a way to detect this material uh so we we say about the cloaking is uh uh in the sense that you don't see this uh like uh like um uh, in the in the uh in the amplitude or the wavefront, right? Uh, yeah, wave, wavefront it preserves the uh, wavefront, and uh, so it's not de detected the material; it's de detected what's in inside that. Okay, I see. Yeah, uh, so you don't see the scattering of that to make the long story short. So basically, if you uh, make like uh, the cloaking, that you don't see the scatter wave. Okay, I see. Thank you. Uh, I think I, I have one small question. Maybe it is a little naive. Uh, I saw your prescope. Uh, uh, you you did you did the experiment always propagate the wave is propagating along the x, y, and z direction. If I want to like input a x direction and see the x plus y direction, can it be done? Uh -huh. This is actually not naive, it's a very good question. This is also raised by the referee. <laughs> so uh, the short answer is the effect is not as good as this one. Because, uh, your, because, because your surface you, will be chopped. Yes, oh. yes. If you chop it along certain kind of uh, like directions, like 45, uh, we did a, uh, and like the waveguide with some kind of angle. So not arbitrary angle, uh, it will work because uh, actually, uh, if you go through other directions, you actually change like this uh, uh, symmetry there. Yeah, yeah, and, I saw, uh, I saw your symmetries. It's yeah. Y and Z. And uh, and the effect median actually at that point, actually this effect median is uh, quite, you know, this uh, uh, sensitive. So then it will change. But how can we do like? Uh, the referee also asked us this question, and uh, our solution is if you want to bend like into other directions, then you have to gradually make it like gradually change uh, uh, structures. 
Okay, like you, you, you gradually change and then you can still preserve this uh, uh, to a certain extent, this uh, effective uh, index. I so we, we, we make a banded structure, but uh, at uh, like different locations, the size and uh, uh, this, uh, uh, what that, this uh, uh, A, the, the, the distance is uh, different. So it's a position dependent action. Okay, thank you. So, so is it possible to find a unicell with like sphere, it's sphere like uh, or rotation symmetry? So, um, to the best of our understanding, we tried with the spherical inclusions and with very complex with uh, uh, coated, you know, these uh, structures. Uh, but we were not successful because uh, there are too many constraints. Sometimes you, you want to get the, like in certain, as uh, the uh, professor previously mentioned, you have some, you need to get some bandwidth. Um, so what do I mean? You can get the linear dispersion, but sometimes it's a very small region. And, uh, and also uh, sometimes the band, like there are too many other kinds of uh, bands around. So you will excite a lot of uh, states that you don't want. So there are many, many constraints. But I'm not saying this is not possible because, uh, you know, we tried and we did not su succeed. That, that does not mean that does not exist, right? Maybe in the future you use machine learning or whatever other kind of method you will be able to find. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, I see there are no more questions. Uh, so uh, maybe let's thank uh, Professor Wu once again. Thank you. Thank you.